Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumps on Lightning episode. Today I have Venkata with me to talk to me about the new integration between Azure Arc Enabled SQL Managed Instance and Active Directory. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumps on Lightning episode and today I have Venkata with me to talk to me about the new integration that we have with Azure Arc Enabled SQL Managed Instance and Active Directory. Venkata, thank you for joining me on this Jumpstart Lightning episode. First thing first, Venkata, who you are and what is it that you do? Thank you, Leo, for uh, having me on the show. My name is Venkata Chintala. I'm a cloud solution architect in infra Azure infrastructure. I help uh, big enterprise customers um, uh, on the various Azure solutions, especially these days, I'm working on Azure Arc uh, hybrid solutions mm -hmm. and uh, SQL managed instance with Azure Arc. So Venkata, you and I, we've been working together for a while, and I know that you're working with uh, some of our largest customers um, here in uh, here in Microsoft. And, you know, Venkata, shifting gears, I wanted to talk to you about the Jumpstart scenario that you develop and all the things that uh, that are there. But the, the first question that I have for you is, what is it that you're seeing in the wild? Why, why this topic is so important that we're about to uncover today? Sure, yeah, definitely. So if you look at today's uh, industry or enterprise customers for Microsoft, Mm -hmm. They're using SQL servers on uh, their on-prem and other cloud environment, and they're running on Windows uh, servers. Mm -hmm. They're having a lot of challenges upgrading the Windows from 2012 to 16 and 19 and 22. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, are, they, are, they also need to upgrade the SQL servers. It's causing a lot of delays to catching up the latest technology and latest uh, patching. So SQL managed instance on uh, Kubernetes is going to mm -hmm. help them a lot. And I'm currently helping my customer to migrate their on-prem infrastructure, on-prem mm -hmm. databases into uh, Azure SQL managed instances running on Kubernetes. You know, Venkata, I see a lot of use cases for Azure Arc enabled SQL managed instance. Obviously, talking to a lot of customers and partners, and you know, our own uh, our own field. Um, and uh, you touched on a very important point, right? The upgradability. Um, you know, obviously security is a big deal when it comes to Azure Arc enabled SQL managed instance and Active Directory. All these stuff are enterprise enterprise grade features that we are rolling out. So I'm excited to talk to you today about specifically about the Active Directory authentication. Um, before we dive into the demo that I know that you have for me today, uh, Venkata, there are two types of authentication for Azure Arc enabled SQL MI and Active Directory, right? We have the customer managed, we have the system managed. Talk to me about that for a second. Surely. Yeah. So before jumping into that, I wanted to give you a very small example. Mm -hmm. All these SQL servers running today, they're connected to the runtime uh, uh, Active Directory. Uh -huh. So they need to seamlessly migrate those databases into Azure Arc. Okay. To do that, we need to have support for SQL managed instance AD authentication. This is where our AD support, and in order to do the AD support within Kubernetes, we need key tabs. There are two types. Mm. Uh, there are two ways you can generate uh, key tabs. They, they both has pros and cons. Let me talk about my customer uh, uh, they're using. They want to have full control on how they generate uh, AD accounts, how they generate key tabs. For those type of customers, we have a customer managed key tab. They have full control. Mm -hmm. On the other side, there are customers. They don't want to deal with any management of these key tabs. Yeah. They're okay to give control permissions into the uh, Active Directory organization unit. Mm -hmm. for generating, auto-generating the key tabs. We call this as a system managed key tab. Yep. All you have to do is provide your directory information. You can connect to the Active Directory, generate a key tab, deploy SQL managed instance. You connect to the SQL managed using Windows authentication mm -hmm. from different clients and applications. Okay, so great. So we have customer managed, right? We have system managed, super important stuff. And this is just because this is not your day-to-day Kerberos authentication that you have with just taking a Windows machine with SQL on board that or connected to Active Directory and just do authentication. Now we have Linux in the picture. That's why we have those key tabs. And like we said, we have customer managed, we have system managed. All right, that's good. I'm happy that we established that. So Vincata, I want to I wanna, uh, go into the jumpstart scenario that you developed, right? You and I, we had conversations around that and you went by and developed that scenario. Talk to me about the scenario. Uh, show me some, some of this stuff in action. Sure, yeah, definitely. So, so please let me know if you can uh, see my uh, screen share. I'm going to start with the jumpstart scenario. Yes. Uh, for the people who are watching this uh, video, 
and uh, this is uh, um, a link we are going to share in the uh, description. Yep. This is a jumpstart scenario I have created to help customers to understand how this whole thing works when you're mm -hmm. going to migrate your SQL servers into Azure Arc to gain the benefits of upgradability and the patchability mm -hmm. and keep the databases current. So here, if you go to the documentation, let me scroll up a little bit. Um, so you can see all the description and why it is important, all the links that are uh, showing, for example, uh, migrating and SQL Man's instance, mm -hmm. Kubernetes and ARM templates. But let mm -hmm. me talk about the prerequisites. You, these are all standard for a lot of these uh, jumpstart scenarios. Yeah. And I want to skip this one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to jump right into the, the most important part. Yeah. You have Azure uh, IRM template to deploy mm -hmm. this, and you have the VNet configuration, you have AKS, AKS configuration, the mm -hmm. client VM configuration, the log analytics. And the most important is let's jump into the deployment. In order to deploy this jumpstart scenario in your own mm -hmm. environment, all you have to do is just take this Azure deploy the parameter just JSON. Mm -hmm. Let me show you in the different tab yeah. what parameters are. You need an RSA key to provide to your AKS to yep. log into the, the, the console CLI. Yep. Most important is your SPN, your client secret from yep. the Azure Active Directory and the so pretty standard stuff, right? When you're deploying an ARM template, but it's also pretty standard stuff for jumpstart scenarios. Exactly. For all the jumpstart very scenarios. modular. Yeah. Okay. So one important thing you need to focus here is there's an option to deploy SQLMI plus yep. SQLMI HA yep. along with AD authentication scenario. Uh, yep. In this case, it is going to set up automatically. What I like to do here is, let me go back to the jumpstart scenario. Mm -hmm. Once you provide all these parameters, you can actually create a resource group and then run this AZCLI yep. command by providing this template URI mm -hmm. and you're good to go. And this is, Vinkara, this is uh, very much similar to other jumpstart scenario that we have exactly. that are following the same philosophy of that one, one single click deployment, right? Which is what we have here and also uh, you're not going to fail doing this because we're, you know, we're providing all the guardrails, the automation around that. Okay, so you have the scenario, you're putting a bunch of parameters, okay? What is it that you're getting at the end of the scenario or at the end of the automation, I should say? Sure, Leo. So once you finish all the deployment mm -hmm. and you go to the Azure portal, this is my resource group. Yep. And you can see all the resources part of this uh, jumpstart scenario. Yeah. And the most important part you need is Active Directory Domain Services. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a virtual machine deployed with ADDS pre-installed and it configures dump, jumpstart that uh, local. So we domain. are provisioning that Active Directory machine for the user, right? They don't have to, they don't have to connect to their own Active Directory environment. Exactly. Okay. And this Active Directory comes with a DNS because uh, SQL managed instance need a DNS to mm -hmm. resolve an uh, Active Directory uh, domain controller. And get the uh, it's always the DNS, way. right? Exactly. It's always DNS, yeah. Okay, so okay. there's a DNS, and also, most important thing now we have a client VM that is actually you're using to test yeah. your connectivity using Windows authentication to SQLMI, and that DNS is actually integrated into your uh, virtual network. You can open this VNet and you can see the DNS servers. The mm -hmm. DNS server is the uh, ADS IP address. So we are provisioning, let's just recap here for a second. We're provisioning an Active Directory VM, right? Out of band Active Directory machine for the user. We're provisioning the AKS cluster, which is also ARC enabled because that's right. a fundamental requirement in order for us to do this scenario. So there is that. And we're also configuring the DNS configuration, everything that is in between, you just kind of jello everything. And the client machine is something that is always there with these data services scenarios, right? Because we need to authenticate that machine against Active Directory. That machine is installed with, um, you know, with all the tools and all that, right? That's correct. Okay. All right. So once you deploy that infrastructure, what is it that the user is getting? So once you deploy all the infrastructure, so there's a client VM because it's a contained and self-contained environment. You log into the client VM is using a remote desktop or mm -hmm. using the Azure Bastion. Yeah. So this is the VM you will be logging in. I already have a remote desktop open. Yeah. Let me take take you to the remote desktop. Okay. And once you go to the remote desktop, uh, there's there are two icons created by default for you right here. Mm -hmm. There's an Azure Data Studio, yeah. and there's a SQL Command endpoints and a SQL Server Management Studio. So everything we, that you need. Yeah. Yeah, they're all there okay. on the desktop. You can simply jump in here. So by the way, before I you know, go into that, once you log in first time. Mm -hmm. You have to log in using a, a domain slash or demo user, yeah. so that is going to 
take your credentials and then set up all the everything. There's a lot of script running behind the scene, but this yeah. is the final state once you finish all that. So that run. machine, that client machine is already authenticated, got all the tools that you need in order to interact with the environment, data studio, SSMS, um, you know, everything. Okay, that's cool. Exactly. Yeah, and it also joined to the domain also. So I just wanted yeah. to let you know. Okay. So now let's take a look into the data studio. I already have the Azure, Doc, um, Azure data studio. Okay. So look at this jumpstart SQL dot uh, jumpstart dot. I see an FQDN, like a DNS um, name. Yeah. Is a DNS name, uh, which is critical for supporting Kerberos authentication. Without DNS, okay. it doesn't work. That's mm -hmm. why we have to set up AD and um, a DNS and the K, K tabs and all. Okay. So once you open, if you connect this, it is connecting using Windows authentication. If you look at the icon, you see the integrated on the top. So yeah. it is using Kerberos key tabs, uh, uh, Kerberos authentication to connect and access. That's cool. That's cool. And we also provisioning like a, you know, I, I can this see is that user, we're also provisioning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can also provision the adventure work simple database and I can see the user there. Jumpstart exactly. user 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 user. And it has a uh, sysadmin permissions to the database server. That's cool. How does that look like from the from the Active Directory side of the house? Can you show me? Sure, Leo. So, so we have actually have tightened the security a little bit. So you cannot you cannot directly access from Azure portal or a remote through Bastion. Mm -hmm. have, you can access through Bastion, but not through uh, remote desktop. Okay. So I have to remote desktop in from uh, client machine. Yeah. So these and, are... and for the viewers, just a second, Venkata, kind of, for the viewers, apologies for this is maybe too small, right? Because we still, you know, we're doing a lot of cool things in Microsoft, but we still haven't figured out how to zoom in into, <laughs> into the right. uh, uh, Active Directory's users and uh, and computers uh, interface. But yeah, go ahead, Venkata. Kind of. That's right. So this is the domain controller we set up as part of the uh, org box. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that, as a security best practice, we always recommend using our organization unit so that you can isolate your um, uh, any system managed or customer managed uh, service accounts okay. into this OU and then grant permissions. So in this jumpstart scenario, uh, there's a service account created, which is as a SQL my customer managed key for naming mm -hmm. conventions. Mm -hmm. And uh, this account is used to generate the customer managed key tab and then supply that as parameter into your YAML file as fully automated. If we, all the scripts are available online, you can yeah. go and take a look. And the good Benefit of this is you don't need to deploy the whole thing. You can take bits and pieces. You can try yourself too. Yeah, that way you can get beautiful. more hands-on. Yeah, that's beautiful. I really like the fact that this is modular and all that. Okay, so we talked about the Active Directory side of the house. Just kind of maybe even kind of to wrap it up, show me how it looks like from the Kubernetes side of things, right? Because we are deploying a bunch of things here as part of as part of the scenario. Talk to me about what we have on the Kubernetes side of the house. Sure, Leo. I'm sorry. Um, let me go back to the remote desktop right here. Mm -hmm. I need to just um, minimize this. Okay. Okay. So here, I so have. So now we're back in the client machine, right? Yes, client machine. Mm -hmm. So when you client, when you go to the client machine, you can actually query your SQL managed instance. This is the first command I ran. So you can say kubectl get SQLMI and okay. uh, namespace, mm -hmm. and it is showing your SQL managed instance plus yep. the primary endpoint to connect. Well, that's the data. DNS that we saw in ADS, right? In data exactly. yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And the heart of this entire SQL managed uh, um, instance, uh, Active Directory Authentication, is AD Connector. This is a critical one because mm -hmm. that's what manages the, the permission, I mean, the key type authentication with SQLMI and AD Authentication. Gotcha. So this is okay. called AD Connector. And this you provide the key type to the AD Connector uh, and then then you deploy SQL managed instance, and these are the containers. Right now, you see, mm -hmm. uh, I just deployed a single instance uh, without HA. But yeah. if you deploy HA, you get almost uh, uh, three more instances. Yeah, uh, two more. I'm sorry. And the the Active Directory, just maybe to uh, to wrap it up here, when kind of the Active Directory connector, that's a custom resource definition that we developed as Microsoft, right? For right. you know, for this deployment, and that's the component that is actually managing the interaction with one, the key tab, right? Uh, that either the customer is uh, um, providing or it's system managed, like we like we said, but it's also the component that is responsible for interacting with the DNS that is exactly. uh, right. that is uh, from the customer, right? The one that is the one that the customer is providing us, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, you know, Vincara, this is a this is a very cool demo, and I've you know I've seen you developing this uh, this demo. Uh, just final thought um, on the demo. 
I really like the fact in, in the scenario in general, I really like the fact that this is containerized um, in the sense of it's a sandbox. You know, you don't have to abuse your own Active Directory infrastructure. You don't have to do any of that. We're deploying everything for you. Everything is kind of sanitized, very clean. I really like that. Right. Yeah. So this gives you very good experience before you implement in your non-production and production environment. We wanted to give you as much flexibility to learn and understand the whole thing yeah. and move forward and migrate your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I mean, databases into Azure Arc uh, data services. Very cool. Very cool. So, Venkata, I want to wrap up this episode and uh, say thank you for uh, for coming, showing me this. Uh, you know, this was a very impressive scenario to see uh, uh, you developing this scenario, and I'm happy that eventually we got this out the door, and now it's available for all our Jumpstart users uh, to use and enjoy. Obviously, we're going to link uh, the scenario in the description below. Venkata, I want to uh, I want to say thank you for joining me. Uh, but for the Jumpstart uh, viewers, thank you so much for supporting us thus far. To continue to support us, please make sure to do your liking and subscribing this video. We're coming up with new things, uh, you know, almost on a weekly basis. I want to say at this point, but uh, and, and and it helps us bring folks like Venkata and other people from the community and from the product to show you everything that is happening on this space. Like this is a very exciting space, Azure Arc and Hybrid. And I'm happy that I have a chance to work with folks like yourself, Vincada. So Vincada, uh, for folks that want to reach out to you, what is the best way to do so? You, LinkedIn is my best way. You can uh, reach out to, you, you can see my LinkedIn uh, um, information in the description, and then you can connect me online and I can respond to any questions you need. Awesome. Vincada, thank you so much for joining me and thank you, for thank you so thank much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, appreciate that you coming into the show. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.